So once all the preparations are complete, it's time to add markup for basic physics. Step one here is to make sure that you have uh, a scene and a ground plane in your topmost world layer. So let's uh, switch again to our, uh, to our world layer, uh, our stage layer. Make sure that we have a scene and that the gravity is set correctly for your world and your scale. It's a good idea to set the scene to use the CPU solver for single asset testing because you're not really going to benefit from the added performance of uh, the GPU for single asset testing anyway. And uh, the CPU uh, solver's behavior is kind of the gold standard, right? So um, you want to make sure that that's the one that behaves perfectly. You should also be generous with time step settings. So when in doubt, just uh, use smaller time steps. You can always optimize for uh, bigger time steps and better performance later once the behavior is correct. Once you have all of these things set up correctly, you can switch to the assets physics layer again, which we will be using for all of the rest of the rigging process. If your asset has portions that are fixed to the world, so uh, basically bolted down, select those static pieces first. So the X forms closest to the scene graph root that only have such static subtrees under them and add static colliders presets to them. Now turn on collider visualization and make sure the colliders for all static things look good before moving on to the next step. Note that we draw little normal lines for meshes that should point outward. Now let's identify all of your dynamic X forms. These are the ones that we referred to as actor X forms in the previous section. They will each have rigid moving subtrees under them. Let's add rigid body presets to all of these. Again, watch the collider visualization to make sure that all colliders look good. Note that we want to have colliders for everything, even if they are not intended to actually collide during the simulation, because they are also used to pre-compute default masses, which are very important to be reasonable. We also assign default masses for colliderless rigid bodies, but these defaults are generally less good for simulation than uh, masses that are computed from colliders. Press play to ensure that you get good tumbling and piling behavior of your individual rigid bodies. Note that uh, for some assets that are intended to be jointed together later, um, your uh, pairs of objects that uh, have overlaps because they are going to be having a joint in that overlap region are going to pop apart. That's okay, but we're going to fix that in the next step. Again, you might have this collider popping. Um, and even if you don't, it's in general a good idea to add group-based filtering now. So what you do is you create a collision group. You add all of your actors and top-level static X forms to this collision group, and then set the group to not collide against itself, even if it's a temporary thing. Because we're going to be adding joints, and most of your armature is probably going to be held up using joints and not by using contacts, like it is for our case with the lamp, we don't want to have uh, spurious contacts interfere with our joint behavior. We want to completely debug the joints and make sure they're working before we might need to um, add in some contacts. So for example, before we want to have a car roll on the road, we want to make sure that uh, all of its um, suspension and, uh, and, and wheels and so on are jointed correctly. So we're going to take an approach that's kind of like um, a car mechanic might uh, use. You're going to jack up your car um, with a lift, do all of the, the, the jointing work, and then you're going to drop down your car and have it collide with the road.
Now look at all of your bodies and note whether there is any particularly small body. So in this lamp, there is like one very small body that's connecting the um, arm of the lamp to the actual lamp um, fixture. That is a very light object. And in general, physics uh, solvers have a hard time solving scenarios where um, there is a big heavy mass at the end of a long um, arm chain and uh, especially if there's like very small objects with like almost no mass those are very difficult so it's sometimes a good idea um, to fix behavior problems by artificially increasing those masses of course it's also possible to simulate realistic and tiny masses by just uh, taking you know really small time steps but uh, you have to weigh whether that actually makes sense for you Another situation where the automatically computed masses might not be ideal is uh, parts that are supposed to be hollow in real life and not massive. So, um, for example, the lampshade portion uh, for our lamp, that's obviously a mostly hollow object, but uh, uh, a really large uh, total mass is computed for it by default. So also for that, we're going to use a mass override. So in general, um, let's one by one add a mass uh, component override to each rigid body where we are unlikely to be happy with the default mass. Another thing to be aware of is, again, let's get back to this example of wheels. You really want the center of mass of a virtual wheel to be centered, just like you want to have the wheels of your real car balanced. And if you have been to a, a car mechanic who is, uh, you know, uh, changing the wheels of your car, they're actually going to add little weights to the wheel to make sure that the wheel is completely balanced. There's like wheel balancing machines out there to make sure this is perfect, because otherwise your real car is going to drive poorly. And uh, virtual cars are also going to get uh, poor driving behavior, but also weird uh, pendulum behavior on the wheels if the centers of mass are not centered. So again, in the visualization, watch out that that is all looking correct and, and perfectly centered. Otherwise, um, the artifacts of having an offset center of mass are actually typically worse in simulation than in reality, because here you have a very frictionless system. So a small mass offset in reality is not going to actually be visible because your car axles have a lot of friction and they're very difficult to move and they're attached to a motor, etc. Um, and you don't notice those little imperfections. But in this virtual simulated system, unless you go out of your way to add friction to it, things are going to be, um, you know, going on and preserving energy and swinging back and forth forever, which is very annoying. So make sure that your rigid bodies have great behavior now because things are just going to get more complex from here on. You're also welcome to set up uh, things like surface materials and friction, but they're not going to impact the joint creation process that comes next. So you can also leave these things for later.